Let's go over a case. This is a case of a 64 year old man who presented with a solitary neck mass. He had some intermittent short, shortness of breath and also occasional fatigue, but he was otherwise in good health and his past medical history was otherwise unremarkable. He presented to his primary care physician who noticed on exam a hard, low central neck mass. The PCP's workup included labs and TSH was 10.3. All of the other labs were normal. An ultrasound of the neck was also ordered, and this showed a 2.2 centimeter mass that seemed to be arising from the isthmus of the thyroid gland. There were several suspicious lymph nodes which ranged in size from three millimeters to 2.2 centimeters as well. An ultrasound guided by needle aspiration was done of the thyroid mass, which showed, which was consistent with papillary thyroid carcinoma. There were um, abnormal looking cells with nuclear enlargement, nuclear grooves, and no colloid was seen. The patient was referred to surgery, and the patient underwent a total thyroidectomy and a bilateral central neck dissection. Pathology showed a 2.1 centimeter papillary thyroid cancer that was arising from the isthmus of the thyroid gland. Uh, there was extrathyroidal extension, and three of seven central compartment nodes were involved. The largest was 1.8 centimeters, and there was extranodal extension seen. Thus, he was staged as a T2N1 MX, and the patient was considered to have an ECOG performance status of zero. He then was referred for further treatment and was given radioactive iodine, 150 millicuries. The post iodine scan showed uptake in the neck only that was considered consistent with some remnant thyroid tissue. And then follow up at three months showed on levothyroxine, the TSH was 0 0.2 and thyroglobulin measured 68. A neck ultrasound was done, and this showed no evidence of residual disease in the thyroid bed, and there were no suspicious neck nodes. A chest CT scan was then performed, and this showed more than 15 lung nodules. The largest was 1.4 centimeters in size. A fine needle aspiration was done under CT guidance, confirming metastatic papillary thyroid cancer. The patient was considered to have radioiodine refractory differentiated thyroid cancer, metastatic to the lungs, and lenvatinib at a dose of 24 milligrams daily was initiated. So this gentleman who's 64 years old and is otherwise in good health presented with a thyroid cancer rising in the isthmus, a papillary thyroid cancer with multiple involved neck nodes and high-risk features. Upon uh, further investigation, he was found to have lung nodules. We know that he has radioiodine refractory disease based on the fact that the lung nodules were biopsy proven and did not take up radioactive iodine. Therefore, the patient presents with metastatic radioiodine refractory papillary thyroid cancer. Overall, for these patients with metastatic iodine refractory disease, the prognosis is not great, even though it's thyroid cancer. The 10-year uh, survival for this patient population is less than 10%. The median overall survival is less than five years. Now in the era of treatment for uh, thyroid cancers, thus far we don't have great long-term follow-up data from the clinical trials to know what the median overall survival is for patients on treatment, such as with MKIs, uh, uh, like serafinib and lenvatinib. Um, but we know, for example, from longer-term follow-up from the SELECT trial with lenvatinib that the median overall survival is in a number of years with treatment um, and with a lower bound of 31 months with a median overall survival with long-term follow-up not yet met.